Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions and I am Andrew Hess. And today I wanted to go over with you more things to do with HTML. I've already done a couple of these videos, but this video we're going to go to even more. So I was researching HTML and I found some really cool things that we could incorporate in Power Apps with just HTML. I know that uh, PowerPoint doesn't really accept CSS, but we can use the HTML text here. And there's some really cool things we can do. So first off, if you haven't liked or subscribed my channel, please do that. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm moving forward. I appreciate everybody who likes, subscribes. If you don't like something I do, that's fine. Let me know too. Um, the intention of my channel is to give you ideas and you know create your own power apps I know some people may even be better than me at power apps I have no problem with that I want you guys to be better than me but we can all learn from each other so in our HTML text there's some really cool things we can do now you could create an accordion right so normally with an accordion part you would normally see it in a website with maybe a, a frequently asked questions or to give you a lot of links so Let's take a look at the details and summary tags of HTML. So details, and then we'll do indent and do summary, question one, and then we'll end our summary. And this is the answer to question one, and then we'll end details. Let's take a look. So in here we have question one, and this is the answer to question one. Now we could put a URL in there. We could we could do whatever we wanted, right? So let's do another one. So details. I'll just copy paste this actually. Question two. This is the answer to question two. So let's take a look now. Oh, we have a little bit of syntax error. So let's take a look now. Once I put in that symbol, there we go. So now let's take a look. We have question one. This is the answer to question one. Question two, this is the answer to question two. So you could fill this out and you know make your, your site beautiful. And there's other things you can do, like you can pull in variables. So let's say we have some text inputs here. So I just randomly put some text inputs. In our HTML part, instead of question one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write another um, quotation marks and then we're gonna say and text one text input one dot text and and then we'll we'll go back in there so now if you take a look and we start writing in here if we start writing you notice that it's populating the uh, the accordion here on this side isn't that really neat so you could make your data however you wanted um, then you could like print the screen off if you wanted to or or you can define things. Um, this is just using HTML to display the data in different ways. So let's keep going. Let's let's take an, uh, another look. So instead of this is the answer to question one, we'll do another um, double quotes and text input two dot text. Let's see if I do it right. And there we go. So now, if we start writing, create the breakdown structure. So we'll go back to step one. If we uh, create work breakdown structure, now question two. Well, let, let's, let me keep going. I'm just going to keep going and finish this off. So here we'll do text input three dot text and and then this is the answer to question two. So. Uh, what we can do to spread it out more is we can use paragraphs too. So we can use a paragraph tag. So let's use a paragraph tag here. So paragraph and text input for dot text and in the paragraph. And then we'll do another paragraph. And I know I copied this one, so I know this is text input for underscore one dot text and key tag. So let's take a look. Let's see if I did the right syntax. So now we have step one, create work breakdown structure. Step two, 
identify risk, identify issues. You know, we could, uh, you know, put bullets in here if we wanted to, or, or little dashes in our in our um, HTML. But you can see how we broke it down. And let's just put a step three in there just for final touches. Let's put a step three in here. I'll just I'll write step three this time. So step three. This is what you would do. Just so we can take a look at it. And if I can get the syntax correct, I forgot that there again. All right. So now we have step one, create the work breakdown structure that comes from our, our text input. Step two, you can see identify risk, identify issues. And, you know, we can directly write in here and change the HTML because we're, we're using that uh, text input. And then finally, if we close step two and open up, you know, we have step three. All right, so that's one thing we can do, right? The accordion. Let me just write that up here. This is the accordion. And normally people use this for a fact of frequently asked questions. You know, normally people do that or they might do URLs, like, you know, if they wanted to display a bunch of websites. Um, that's an accordion. So let's show another one. And this one is gonna be called progress. Wait till you see this. I really like the looks of this. So we have progress. And let's say we have a slider. So this is a slider bar, right? And you know, of course, other people have recreated things, recreated these components and power apps to do this. But did you know how easy it was to do with HTML? So let's do input, uh, oh no, text, text HTML. Now we're gonna do progress slash progress look at that we already have a progress bar isn't that really neat look at this <laughs> we got a progress bar so now that we have this progress bar we can do let's see max equals 100 okay and then the value is equal to 30 so look at that we filled out the progress bar right but that's not all we wanted to do. So let's say, you know, maybe you had a text input and you wanted to fill in a progress bar. But let's take this slider right here. So we have slider one and let's input it into the value parameter. So I'll do double quotes and I'll do slider one dot. Oh, we got to do ampersand slider one dot value ampersand and then the double quotes. Now as we drag this slider, the progress bar goes up and down. So let's say we had like some kind of percentage field. So, you know, let's say we had a, a text input and we wanted to, you know, it was a, um, a number field. We could replace the value again. We could replace the value with, what is that? That's text input five, text input five dot text we could easily just fill this in here you know 78 so we can pull that in and show a progress bar there's I'm sure there's thousands of ways to use this progress bar there's more we could do we could do another double quote and then ampersand text input 5 dot text ampersand and then the percentage so now as we change this number to 100 you know we can put the the number right next to it so that's another little cool uh, part we can use that's the progress bar right so we could combine that with uh, many different parts if we wanted to we could use it to display you know how much we're done with a, a, a form you know if our form had four parts we could show you know 25 percent complete um, there's many things we could do with that progress bar and that's right out of the box HTML that you can use very simply using progress. So yeah, this is the uh, details. That's details. And this is progress. 
All right, so that's uh, another thing we can do with HTML that, you know, can make your Power App look way better. So the next one that I was thinking about, it's a little bit different, but I thought maybe if you used like a camera part or something uh, on your Power App, you could use this. So there is a input, so input uh, type equal color. So this is like a color picker that we could use input and so we could write in here you know select the color All right I took a picture of myself using the camera property in power apps and I just wanted to show how you could use this color picker right so imagine if you have a camera uh, with your phone and then you have a, a color picker you could then use this little uh, eyedrop tool and find parts in the picture and identify the different colors uh, in your picture. I really think this could be, uh, you know, used in, in many different apps, but you could find the different colors in a picture that you have and then use the uh, value here. So you could do RGB or you can select different ones. You can show the hex color. So, you know, if you wanted to uh, have a picture of something, then use the hex color. So you can see that's almost like a purple blue so a little bit darker blue and you know we could do you know the sun back here is a white and so it actually shows it on the green tint which is kind of neat and skin color so you could use this color picture in a photo that you use with power apps from the camera and and define that color I think that could be an app all in itself so these were three different uh, things that I figured out we could do with HTML and power apps so we have the accordion part Right, so the accordion, progress bar. I could totally see the progress bar being used either with some kind of slider, used in a gallery, you know, used in a form with how much completion you can do. Um, and then finally, the color picker. I could see the color picker being used with some kind of camera application and then using that color in your app or using it to define something. Um, uh, but I, I do think that could be used with Power Apps. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. I, I haven't seen any videos about this stuff. I kind of just researched myself and, and found some things that you can do with HTML and Power Apps together. So thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.